Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. We are your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus and Ushamut Zide Pinkavichin. We've been mastering secrets of organ playing for more than 20 years and sharing them on this blog since 2011. On this show, which we create from our home in Vilnius, Lithuania, we strive to help you grow in every area of organ playing, including practice, technique, repertoire, sight reading, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory, harmony, and many others. Our hope is to help you become a complete musician, or what we call as total organist, a program which we have created to help you reach your dreams faster than you would do on your own. If you are new here, we invite you to subscribe to receive free updates of this blog at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video on how to master any organ composition and 10-day organ playing mini chords. And now let's go to the podcast for today. Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Usha. Let's start episode 430 of Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This question was sent by May and she writes, Hi Vidas, thank you very much for addressing to my concerns in this email. I have been spending over an hour each day on the harmony exercises for a few weeks. I worked on the difficult way whenever possible using two fingers from each hand, as suggested by you in an earlier email. Ever since I could manage to use to play the bass part of hymns with the pedals, I always use the pedals. I find it much, much easier to play the hymns with three fingers and both feet. And now I'm not comfortable at all playing hymns with hands only. I'm hoping I can slowly regain my hands only hymn playing skills by doing these harmony exercises. For quite many chords in the exercises there is no way I can play them with hands only and two fingers from each hand. I need the help from the pedals anyways. I always wonder how piano players practice these chords. A question from the week 8 harmony exercises. Uh, should we skip uh, all dominant to tonic sequences starting with the third note from the dominant chord on top? Is this correct? I saw that you have made the fingering of BWV 618 available a few days ago. I love to learn this choral prelude, but my hands are small and my fingers are short. My hands and fingers could only re- stretch to reach one octave only, meaning I'm not able to reach certain intervals, uh, for example, from the low A to middle C in measure 7. Does it mean I could never play this choral prelude? Is there any ways I could overcome this difficulty? So, Sha, let's start from the top, okay? Yes, so many things to talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is spending a lot of time on those harmony exercises from Harmony for Organist Level 1. And the first thing that she struggles is playing hymns with hands only. Right? Well, that's an instra- interesting struggle because usually it's not a problem for people to play hymns by hands. It's more of a problem to play with the pedals. I guess she would struggle with pedals also if she used left hand also. Well, too. The most no, easiest way is to play with pedals and the right hand. Playing you know, in close position, three voices with your right hand. Mm-hmm. So she probably should, should practice uh, playing the tenor line with the left hand. True, this would be a very beneficial exercise and it would improve coordination a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, um, because since she wrote herself that she has you know, a small hand, she won't be able always you know, to play free voices with the right hand and she really needs to 
play one voice with the left. You teach a lot of uh, students on the piano, those harmony exercises. Yes. She wonders how piano players practice the chords when they have to reach uh, between the bass and tenor, for example. Well, of course, we have no pedal, um, sustaining pedal in you know in the piano, but I would not offer, would not suggest my students to use it. Well, but in that case, if you cannot reach, you know, let's say, bass and tenor voices at the same time, you would hit the bass you know, first and then would play the rest of the chord. Mm-hmm. Tenor, alto and the bass. That's what we do. Yeah. Or sometimes, you know, we can manipulate bass and, you know, put it an octave higher. Exactly. Uh, and... Uh... She was, is also wondering about those sequences, dominant to tonic. And uh, the third note, the seventh scale degree, yes. is problematic, right? It also, it always has to resolve to the first scale degree. Well, um, not always, always. It has to resolve to the first scale degree when it's in the soprano voice. Yes, in the soprano. And uh, in those exercises, from week 8, I'm skipping uh, dominant to tonic sequences in that position. There is no 7th scale degree in the soprano. And she's wondering, is this correct? Yes. She could do other dispositions, but not uh, when soprano is in the 7th scale degree. No, but it's one of the most common you know, positions of the dominant to have a seven skill degree in soprano. Yes. In general. But the the connection was not harmonic, but melodic. And therefore, you know... But you could do harmonic connection with the seven skill degree. That's very easy. I mean melodic. Oh, yes. If But you said harmonic. Did I? Yes. Okay, I meant melodic. If you but have... when you do melodic, you could do free melodic connection. Oh, I didn't teach her that. That's the easiest way. If you have, let's say, from the bass G, D, G and B, mm-hmm. you would resolve it to C, C, E, C. Skipping G. That's right. Oh. That's no. one of the most common way in general, you know, to resolve dominant. And it works in C minor as well. True. Uh, with uh, B natural in the soprano. Yes. So G, D, G natural, uh, resolving to C, C, E flat, C. Mm-hmm. She's wondering about um, reaching uh, certain intervals in, in Bach's chorales from the Orgel Buchlein. And since she she, she has a short hand, uh, only reaching one octave, I think um, I wrote to her that she could um, use those lines a little bit creatively, right? Most of the time it's possible to play Bach with short hands, most of the time. Yes, I wouldn't say that, you know, <coughs> Bach needs a wide wide hand but from time to time you you see uh, like an interval of uh, of a 12 for example maybe that was the case because short short octave was present yes that's possible Ooh. also maybe you could help with another hand you know what that's concrete spot yes you or always need to check on this concrete situation or uh, raise the bass one octave higher for a measure or two. Yes, that's a possibility too. To make, make the connection logical. Not one note, which is inconvenient, right? But uh, entire motive, let's say. That's a possibility. Yeah. But if you would look at the Bach's hand, from the pictures that we have left, he didn't have a big hand himself. Although, you know, he had sort of short fingers, 
but widely spread, mm -hmm. if you can see so. But that's a good hand for playing polyphonic music. Yeah, maybe people need to do more yoga for fingers. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but you know, if you have really long fingers, then maybe organ is not your instrument. Maybe you need to practice violin. If you have long fingers. Yes. Yes, like Paganini. That's right. But with short fingers, no, in small hand, you can perfectly play organ. Yeah. There's plenty of music that you that could work for you. But probably not Vern. Well. And Frank. Well, I have played them both, although I don't have such a big hand. But it wasn't comfortable. Well, actually, it was after playing. For some time, uh, I guess your span of your fingers improves with time. That's true. That's true, the, especially in the left hand. The more difficult music you play, the more it stretches. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. We hope this was useful to you. Please send us more of your questions. We love helping you grow. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen. This blog is supported by Total Organist, the most comprehensive organ training program online, where you will find courses for every area of organ playing, including technique, practice, sight reading, repertoire playing, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory and harmony, with hundreds of scores and thousands of exercises. Here is what some of the students are saying. Hugh writes, the sight reading course has helped me tremendously. Thank you very much for your SS courses and all your help. Robert writes, I found the fingerings, registration ideas and general comments to be excellent. John writes, I have found your download very helpful. It was really excellent. I have watched some of your teaching videos and when I read your instructions. I try to imagine you are there teaching me. You may feel disappointed that I am two, three days behind, but I am a slow learner, and I have committed to taking the time to get it right, as you say. But the other night my wife commented that she had never heard me play such a detailed melody in the left hand so well. My left hand is generally poor. Robert writes, It has been a great pleasure in my life of having discovered your courses and material as well as the YouTube work of recordings. You have a calm and pleasant way of teaching. Ron writes, Hi Vida Santosha, thank you guys. What a wonderful response to my email note to you. You've got me right, and I feel you understand my level of playing. Yes, at home and lucky that I have an organ for that reason. I am paying attention to this, and I am going to try this haha no longer secret model. Yes, and I love Caesar Frank too. What is very nice about your blog podcast is that Osha and Vidas are like a Socratic dialogue, and by bouncing things off of each other, so much more information comes out and is expressed. Your comments contain a wealth of information and understanding. I really appreciate this. It is very inspiring and will keep us moving forward. Would you like to receive the same or even better results that our students are getting? If so, join them at organduo.lt slash total dash organist. And of course, you will get the first month free too. You can cancel anytime. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to receive free updates of this blog, make sure you do that at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video, how to master any organ composition and... 10 day organ playing mini course. This was Vidas and Osha from Secrets of Organ Playing. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen. <laughs>